All right, we're just gonna jump right into this buttonhole tutorial. And uh, the first thing I wanna do is just check my bobbin and point out something that I had never seen before on the Bernina 1008 bobbin holder. Check this out, there's a little hole in the top notch that locks it into place when you put it in. And I decided, wait a minute, I think the thread's supposed to go through that hole and I have noticed slightly better bobbin uh, under stitches because I did that. Even though the machine has worked fine for many years without me doing that, but hey, there's a hole, I'm gonna poke it. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, so we are, we're gonna insert the bobbin and we're gonna get ready to do the buttonhole setting on the Bernina. Okay, so on this machine, uh, the first thing you wanna do when you put in a new bobbin is to bring the thread up through the bottom and the way you do that is doing one rotation with the needle holding onto the top thread and you can pull the bobbin thread out through the bottom and then you're set to sew. Now the standard foot on the Bernina has a hole wide enough for zigzag stitch and straight stitching and you know uh, just enough to hold the material nice for doing you know all your stitches but there's a foot called the number three foot I believe this is a good foot to use for buttonhole stitches because there's a bigger window on it and you are going to be sewing basically a rectangle and you're going to be looking at the direction of the lines that you're doing. You're going to go uh, back, cross, front, cross, back again. So you're doing a little rectangle. Uh, and I think this number three foot is better for looking through the hole and seeing what you're doing. So I'm going to use that foot for the buttonhole stitch. Okay, so I'm going to install that, lock it down, and the, we're going to start with the needle in the up position for the buttonhole. Actually, every time you start a stitch, you should be in the up position. Now, the top of the selector that has your red and green sides for stitches, the green side is the one that has the buttonhole setting. So you want to make sure that it's in all the way down on the on the red and green, but all the way down. And then you want to make sure that your selector on the bottom of the machine is in the green side. The feed dog selector to the right, make sure the feed dog is up because it's going to be pulling the fabric forward and back. We're going to have a zero width stitch and uh, your machine when it's normal sewing is in the zero position but to do the buttonhole we're going to start with position one. The buttonhole symbol is on the zero but actually it's a little bit past the zero because I feel like it, I can't really get the buttonhole moving if it's in the zero position. It needs to be somewhere, I guess you decide the uh, zigzag thickness. So maybe a 0.5, maybe right in the middle between zero and one is a good place to start. But uh, yeah, you decide when you see it stitching your buttonhole. Of course, you do a practice first on some material and uh, check out how you like it. But it shouldn't be right on zero. It should be a little bit past zero so you can get your stitch going. Uh, here's my little practice uh, fabric. It's a good idea when you are going to do your official buttonhole. I think you should put interfacing on the back for a better support. Um, but I'm going to do it on this scrap material and it should probably work out just fine. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, so you start in position one and you see the machine automatically starts changing uh, stitch widths and needle position, things like that. Uh, I'm going to get off of the zero because I want to have a little bit I want the needle be, to be moving forward so I'm going to do like a 0 0.4 whatever that was uh, and it starts with the left line of the buttonhole going straight forward and it does the zigzag stitch for you every time you change the knob to go to the next position you want to make sure that the needles in the up position now let's take a look at that first line just to see what is going on so we're starting the buttonhole that's the left side of it actually it goes straight towards you and then the next step is switching the button to the knob to setting two with the needle in the up position. And it's going to go backwards on the right side. Now, I screwed the whole thing up because I removed the fabric. But the backward motion is to lay down a straight stitch on the right side. Now, in position three, it's going to do a cross uh, hatch kind of stitch to do the top part of the buttonhole. And you only need to hit the pedal get like three to eight stitches, whatever. You can see it. That's why you've got the number three foot there. You can see exactly what you're doing. There's the top of my buttonhole. That was probably like six or eight stitches. Good enough. Going to number four with the needle in the up position. It's now going to go forward again 
on the right side. So we're bringing the right side of the buttonhole. Now we're going to switch to five to do the crosshatch. That um, makes the bottom end of the buttonhole. And then we go to position six, which goes backwards, straight stitch to finish the original that left side that we started with. And that should complete your perfect buttonhole. Your grandmother would be proud of you. This is probably one of the finest. Oh my God. Okay, so this is how you make a waving praying mantis. Um, this is a uh, praying mantis uh, looking for its mate, waving, hello, don't eat my head. And now I'm gonna show you how to make a buttonhole. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just gonna do it without taking the fabric out. I think I screwed up the uh, pattern there. You could see I, I edited it out the um, second try. Here's the third try. Position one, we're going straight forward. I'm switching to position two. It's gonna go backwards on the right side of the buttonhole. And I'm trying to guide it. I don't know, maybe my machine's wonky, but position three does the cross hatch. Position four goes forward again over that line, but it's a zigzag now. So we're getting the right side of the buttonhole. Position five is gonna do another cross hatch to finish off the bottom. And then position six, which I'm gonna switch right here, is going to do the line that goes back kind of to lock in all those stitches. And there you have a beautiful, I mean like picture perfect, uh, I mean, I mean I honestly, I think I'm just gonna make waving grasshopper buttonholes from now on. But you can also make a standard buttonhole if you're <laughs> that boring. Uh, and it seemed to work out fine. You get your seam ripper, you cut the center out, and there you go. The Bernina 1008 buttonhole tutorial brought to you by me. Amaze your friends and strike fear into the hearts of your enemy with these buttonholes. Uh, don't forget to put your machine back in the zero position with the needle up so that you can go back to regular sewing. Thanks for watching.